Machian und Panzer is <coughs> Girls und Panzer is a 2018 tank sim battle game based off the anime of the same name, produced and developed by Bandai Namco. The game hasn't seen an official North American release physically yet, but I did get this copy imported from PlayAsia, and it does have full English support. And it also came with this little sticker set. Not really for, so I don't really know what I'm gonna... The game case boasts that it contains two different campaigns, and we are going to look at both of them. But of course, not until we do the tutorial. The tutorial itself plays out in the form of a couple stages. Stage 1 teaches you the basics of movement, and Stage 2 teaches you the basics of combat. And that's literally all it teaches you. The tutorial is wildly unsatisfactory. A good deal of information is accessible in the form of splash pages if you want to learn beyond the basics, and I highly recommend you check it out, but even that doesn't teach you all you need to know. For a quick rundown of the mechanics, it works like this. The tank's movement is of course done with tank controls on the left analog stick, and given the weight of the tank, it properly feels like you're controlling a tank. So if controlling tanks with tank controls aren't your thing, you can turn this video off now. But before you guys go, at least, you know, leave me a like, please and thank you. Different tanks have different stats that dictate their speed and maneuverability, with some even being able to boost and drift in forward and reverse by pushing brake and gas at the same time, then releasing brake when enough force is built up. Aiming is done with a right analog stick and this also adjusts your camera. There is a lock on and aim down sights if you feel so inclined to use it. Lock on can only take you so far though, as tanks have different weak points based on armor thickness, so you'll need to gauge the caliber of your shots against the density of their armor if you want to do well. This can make the barrier of entry extremely high for new players, and I will admit that it took a long time for it to click with me. Longer than I would like to admit, in fact, and long enough that I'm sure a good deal of footage used in this video will really grate on the nerves of experienced players. Anyway, in addition to your standard cannon, some tanks have additional weapons you can shoot independent of your main. On the outside of the reticle, you'll see two tiny meters. This one here is your HP, and the other is your special ability. Holding triangle will display what your special ability is, and you can cast your special ability when the meter is full by pressing triangle and circle at the same time. You can also bring support cards into battle, which can be activated using Circle. The touchpad is kind of a mess of controls, having been sectioned off into different distinct areas. But the two most important things that I suggest you familiarize yourself with are the map controls and the distance controls. In short, that's about it, but it's not like there isn't a lot more beyond this. There is. But from here, we're gonna go from the tutorial to the first campaign, aptly named Story Battle. To people who are not fans of the anime or are otherwise unfamiliar with it, this campaign is going to be the worst part of the game for you. To people who are fans, you may find yourself in one of two categories. Either wishing it was something else, or basking in what you might consider the best fan service. Technically, there's not much of a story here at all. Instead, this campaign is comprised of 20 missions. The girls recount the battles they took part in in the anime, and then you get to try it out for yourself. At least four of these missions do not actually contain a gameplay portion, and the remaining 16 have far more visual novel content than anything else. Loaded with exposition that just serves to drag out the campaign to being roughly four to six hours long, this mode only contains about one hour's worth of gameplay. The mission types are varied between annihilate a certain amount of enemies, defeat a specific enemy, survive for the designated amount of time, or arrive at the marked location. Initially, while adapting to the rather cumbersome yet logical controls of the game, I struggled with this campaign a great deal. But when everything clicked about halfway through, I found the missions disappointingly short and easy. To add to the frustration, the missions themselves are constantly interrupted with rather pointless dialogue prompts. When the gameplay is going though, and when the controls did make sense, it was actually rather fun and satisfying, even if I do quite suck at it. And I simply can't deny how cute some of the elements in this game are such as all the girls riding in the tanks on the mission select screen, or the tanks in disguise. 
The second campaign mode known as Domination Battle I found far more enjoyable, although it was actually kind of the exact same thing. Domination Battle again doesn't have a good story, but at the very least it's not all flashbacks padded wall to wall with massive and pointless exposition dumps. Instead, it works like a classic fighter game from the 90s where you pick your character and fight your way through the ranks. I noticed almost immediately, however, that the missions in Domination Mode are mostly one-to-one -one copy paste of the same missions in Story Battle. This time though, you don't get interrupted at all in the gameplay, so it feels like the flow is more rewarding. This also means Domination Battle is far shorter and can be beaten in about 30 to 45 minutes. While going through the stages, you may notice these bears pop up all over the place. Destroy these and pass the stage and you can unlock decals and paint jobs for your tanks. And speaking of tanks and decals, there are a ton of both. Without a doubt, if you don't like the way your default tank controls, you can find something in here that suits you. Not to mention, it's just fun to visit the tank garage and put stickers on things. Extra Match may actually be my favorite piece of single player content on here, as it really mixes up the gameplay from what the first two modes offered, even offering up some funny ideas for boss battles and sporting three different difficulty settings for each challenge. Screw this tank in particular though, as it drives worse than the motorcycles in Grand Theft Auto 4. Then of course we have the online matches. This is the biggest draw to the game, and although I got wrecked time and time again, it was a fun time. In the extent of my time online, I only experienced a small handful of disconnects, but matchmaking could take around 5 minutes to pull off. Sadly, it seems the game either doesn't have proper ranked matches or the servers are so dead that when joining you can easily be paired with people 80 levels higher than you. So don't do what I did and try the online mode before finishing campaigns, unless you already managed to get good. If I had faith that this online would stay active for long, I would openly recommend this to people looking for a good online game to be competitive with, as I think this does have all it needs to succeed, but I fear the wait times now are a sign of worse to come. This game, after all, is a niche of a niche, so it's not too likely it will get as big as it needs to to maintain a sustainable user base for PvP. From a technical standpoint, I feel Girls und Panzer runs fine enough, but on some maps, the frame rate felt a bit sluggish. However, given the nature of tanks themselves being sluggish, it's hard to say this really affected anything while I was playing. I really enjoy the art design and graphic choices they went with here. Everything is bright and clear and the things that need to pop out really do. It's possible to do better, but I'm not gonna complain. The only thing that visually struck me as unpleasant was the story battle mode, which uses screenshots straight from the anime, and the screenshots are clearly of lower quality than the art stills made specifically for the game, and they feel rather cheap in comparison. The sound effects in the game are good and really sell you on the way to the tanks. The voice acting is rather plentiful and very well done, but the music is hit or miss. Some of the established tunes, such as the Civil War piece, When Johnny Comes Marching Home by Patrick Gilmore, really fit the gameplay, but other tunes fail to leave an impression. Overall, I think Girls und Panzer has a solid base for its gameplay, and the gameplay really shines in the online. But with the online seeming to be circling the drainpipe so soon, and nearly every other part of the game failing to live up to its potential, it's hard to say this is worth it to anybody besides the die-hard Girls und Panzer fanbase, or the die-hard fans of games like World of Tanks, who are willing to take a gamble. Or you could just mod World of Tanks to have the Girls and Panzer Girls in it. If this game is something you look forward to, it may be best to wait until a proper North American release, in hopes that the servers will repopulate. And that's all I'm gonna say on Girls und Panzer Dream Tank Match. It's not a lot, but that's all there really is here. If you guys liked this video, if it helped you at all, you know the deal. Like, comment, subscribe, share the video if you can. Links to socials are in the description. As always, folks, thanks for watching. Oh, it's more sticky than I thought it would be. Ah! Oh.